Hi, this is Les Levine, the self-proclaimed voice of truth and reason in Ohio sports. Not so long ago, the sports scene was looking up. Football facilities were set to open. The NBA was settling on how many teams would take part in the games at Orlando. And even baseball was close to an agreement to play ball. Now several Dallas Cowboys, including Ezekiel Elliott and uh, Houston Texan players, have shown up positive for the virus. The NBA, led by Kyrie Irving and others, are questioning the doctors and baseball is just about done negotiating. It makes it tough for me to do a sports program and for you to watch one, but we'll keep on trying to do both. We've got Dan Lobby here. More sports and Les Levine is on the air. From the worldwide headquarters of More Sports and Less Levine, it's a Monday night. It's a brand new week. Good evening, everyone. Welcome once again to More Sports and Less Levine into its 24th, soon to be 25th season, right here exclusively on Cleveland.com. Dan Lobby from Cleveland.com and the Plain Dealer is with us covering the Browns and lots to cover. Hello, Dan. How are you? I'm good, Les. How are you? I'm I'm okay. I'm okay. I keep uh, well. I keep thinking good things about the sports scene. Then they take then they they show it and then they pull it back out of the way. So I don't know what to believe anymore. Yeah, I mean, it's just up and down, especially with baseball. It just, well, baseball is mostly going down, but right. uh, it's, it's up and down every place else. Hard to believe they're going to let that happen, but it, it appears that they will. Um, a, a name that we can't get enough of or we can't get rid of, actually, is Genevian uh, Clowney. What, why does his name keep surfacing, surfacing uh, uh, around the Browns? I think because there's real interest there from the Browns, and, and they would love to add a, a player of his caliber. And, and he's a guy that makes your pass rush better. He fits really well with Miles Garrett, and this is a team that wants to be aggressive. And frankly, they want to try and make the playoffs this year. And you add a talent like Jadavian Clowney, he, he can help you do that. Albert Brewer of Sports Illustrated thinks that number would be uh, on a one-year deal would be about $15 million. That, does that sound right to, right to you? I mean, if, if that's the ballpark and he's willing to take that, I, I think that's a really good deal for the Browns. Uh, they're paying Olivier Vernon $15 million. I don't know if that would change what they would do with Olivier Vernon, uh, but I, I think that would be a, a great deal for the Browns. What, what does it mean by prolonging it as long as both sides have done it? Is that good for the Browns, bad for the Browns, good for Genevian? What What's the story? I think it's good for the Browns because it just means that price is going to stay steady. Nobody out there is willing to give him that, that $20 million that an elite pass rusher usually garners uh, when, when they hit free agency or when they sign an extension. So uh, I think the longer it goes, the more likely it is he's just going to have to settle on something and, and some kind of prove it deal. Going to have to settle for $15 million. That's That's a nice settle. <laughs> yeah, that, that's not too bad. All right. Uh, according to Albert Breer of Sports Illustrated, Jadavia and Clowney's uh, situation continues to be complicated. I think it's of note that the Browns are willing to pay a good rate. I've heard that they'd be okay going to the 50. And there you have it, uh, Albert Greer. Uh, that tells me a couple of things. One, Clowney's financial desire is still a barrier to getting a deal done. And two, those desires may come on a sliding scale based on destination. He's still fast and big and long, and he can change the direction and track people down whenever he wants to. There's another name that, uh, that's Albert Breer of uh, Sports Illustrated. And uh, it's, it's a name, I, I think it's a name that, that would, other than the position that he would take from a current Browns player, I think it's one that would get the Browns, his teammates, if they become teammates. Uh, I think uh, it would be exciting for those guys to have him around him. I mean, just, just imagine what that, that defensive line would look like with uh, Miles Garrett along with Jadavian Clowney. Yeah, and I think you're right. I mean, players know who Jadavian Clowney is. Yeah. They remember that hit he had in college. They they remember him as the number one pick. And this is a guy that put up some numbers when he was in Houston. And the sack numbers always haven't been huge, but he's good against the run. And, and I think that's actually a good compliment to Miles Garrett, to have a guy on the other side who, who's really stout against the run because that's one area where Garrett really hasn't established himself. Dan Lobby from Cleveland.com and the Plain Dealer. All right, so you've got you've, you've got uh, uh, potentially – uh, Jadavian Clowney, you also have an opportunity to, uh, to, to, uh, um, 
to, to make some other additions here. That, that salary cap stays up there. Somehow, some way, the Browns, no matter what they do, they still have room on the salary cap. Yeah, it's, uh, it's impressive. They, they go out and spend a bunch of money, and they still have a bunch of money to spend. It's, it just speaks to that value of having you know, your young players that you consider core players uh, on such affordable deals. That's going to change soon. Uh, but right now, they've been able to maintain a lot of cap space. Is, is there an uh, a artificial uh, deadline here for the Browns and for Clowney to, to get a deal done if they, in fact, are going to do that? You know, I would think you'd want him to be able to report for training camp. But even in that scenario, you know, if he, he's not done by, let's say, camp opens July 28th or 29th, if it's not done by then, if you think it's trending that way, you might let it play into August a little bit. I don't think his position is so complicated that he has to be there uh, on day one of camp and and he's going to be behind if he's not. I, I think you can stretch that out a little bit. Well, that, but ideally, he would be there to report. That works both ways. You say he won't be behind, but everybody's going to be behind based on what's going on and, and trying to implement new things offensively and defensively. It's just one more player. Right. It's just one more player to learn what to do or not to do. Yeah, exactly. With the new scheme and the way they've had to learn it, everybody's behind right now. Any other questions position-wise that uh, we should be concerned about? I know we want to talk uh, a little bit later about Everson Griffin, but any other positions that uh, are, are a question at this moment? I think one position that nobody really talks about, you know, we've, we've talked about linebacker, uh, but I think safety is a position where nobody really talks about it because you're counting right now on a, a guy in Carl Joseph who Oakland didn't want to keep him around. They actually right. ended up signing to Marius Randall. So you've got Carl Joseph, who's sort of here on a one-year proven deal. And they're going to be counting on Grant Delpit. And that's okay. I mean, you picked him in the second round. You should be counting on him to come in and start. But there might be some growing pains there for a rookie safety. Yeah, he's still, you know, a, rookie. Not a, lot of depth he's still a rookie in the, in the second rounder. But, uh, and it's interesting because he was, they were so high. At, teams were so high on him before the, the draft. And then there was a little question as to whether he's going to hang in there. And he hung into the second round, and there were the Browns to take him. Do you, do you look at him as a starting guy right right off the bat? I think you'd want him to. I mean, I think he's a guy that they viewed as a first-round talent, and, and you picked him high enough in the second round that, much like with Greedy Williams a year ago, he actually picked a few spots later. Right. Uh, you know, right. I, I think you want that guy to start as quickly as possible. Maybe because he's a second rounder, you're willing to to give him a little time, but if you pick a guy that high, I think the expectation is to have him on the field. Especially since it's a position of need. 216-575-0403 is the number to call. Did you know the Ohio Lottery has paid out over $1 billion in earnings over the last six months? People are winning in record numbers, and winning is happening all around the state of Ohio. Play an Ohio Lottery game and play it today. You can follow us on Facebook, facebook.com slash more sports and less living. The new content posted each uh, and every day. It's real simple. We uh, post a question, you post an answer, and we put it on the air sometime within the show. Let's take a break. Dan Lobby with us, Cleveland.com and The Plain Dealer. More sports and less living continues exclusively on Cleveland.com. Presque Isle Downs and Casino has sports betting. Use one of our 50 state-of-the-art Bet America kiosks to place your bet and watch your favorite games on one of our many HD televisions or visit our sportsbook area only at Presque Isle Downs and Casino. Do you like Ohio State football? Would you like to get information from me, Doug Maurice, about Ohio State football without having to look at my face? We have got the plan for you. Become an Ohio State text subscriber through cleveland.com. You send a text, 614-350-3315. What do you get? Two, three, four texts right in your phone every day about Ohio State football. Inside information, polls, voting. All kinds of things. You can be on our podcast. We take tech subscriber questions on our Buckeye Talk podcast every week. If you really want to be involved with Ohio State football, in season or out of season, become an Ohio State tech subscriber from Cleveland.com. Send a text to 614-350-3315. 14-day free trial. What do you have to lose? $3.99 a month after that. 614-350-3315. I'll see you in your phone. 
As a kid growing up, my dream was to go to college, play baseball, and get a degree. Coming out of high school, I had two choices. I was accepted into a four-year university, but I decided to come to Tri-C after receiving a scholarship. I got my associate's degree at Tri-C. They transferred all my credits straight into Baldwin Wallace, so I started at Baldwin Wallace University as a junior. My name is Tyler Leonard, and I earned my first degree at Tri-C. The Ohio Lottery Partners in Education program recognizes role model students and teachers from across Ohio. Nominations can now be done completely online. To nominate a deserving teacher or student, go to ohiolottery.com. In the About section, find Partners in Education. There you will find links to the nomination forms. Students, kindergarten through 12th grade, can be academic all-stars. Teachers can be honored as a Teacher of the Month. The Ohio Lottery Partners in Education, where stars shine. Halfway through the month of June, June 15th, birthdays today, Billy Williams, uh, born on, on this date. Uh, Generation X, 1947, Mike Holmgren, former, you name it, uh, former, former uh, little of everything with the Cleveland Browns, everything but not enough. Lance Parrish, the catcher, Wade Boggs, Hall of Famer, and uh, Derek Anderson. Uh, I'm not sure if that's the basketball player or the, uh, the baseball player. Whatever. All celebrating birthdays today on the 15th of uh, of. Um, the month of June, two one six five seven five zero four zero three. Dan Lobby is here of the uh, Cleveland Plain Dealer and uh, Cleveland.com. Dan, we we talk a lot about uh, Jadavian Clowney. There's another name out there that keeps resurfacing, and that's Everson Griffin. What do you think of him? <laughs> He's interesting. He's a veteran who, who's been productive over his career, and and last year had a really nice season. Uh, kind of bounced back last season. Now, he's an older guy, uh, but somebody that. You know, you could see bringing in there. There's another guy that you could bring in on a one-year deal, and, and the question would be, would he want to be a, a part-timer behind Vernon and and Garrett? But also, if Vernon gets hurt or gets hurt again, you can plug him in. So uh, I think he fits really nicely. You have Adrian Claiborne there too, who's a guy who can kind of plug in behind them. I, I think he'd be a nice addition to this team if if he wanted to come here and be a part-time. All right, let's take a look at Everson Griffin along with Jadavian Clowney. See what you have. That's uh, Griffin on the left, and of course Clowney on the right. And you see the the numbers and the age. There's an age difference of five years, and a money difference also. Estimated salary uh, for Griffin seven seven point one million, and uh, something like fifteen to seventeen million for uh, uh, Clowney. So all things considered, uh, and you could take one or the other. Which one do you take? The money goes with it. Which one do you take between the two? You know, honestly, I almost lean a little bit towards Griffin. I think he's been a little more productive getting after the quarterback. He, he's been a little bit healthier uh, than Clowney. I, I kind of lean his way. He's not going to cost as much. And I always like having veterans. I like guys that have been around uh, that can just sort of be the elder statesman in that defensive line room. They, they have a guy like Sheldon Richardson in there and certainly Olivier Vernon. Uh, but, you know, this is a guy that's been around. He you know, probably knows Kevin Stefanski a little bit, even though he's on the other side of the ball. I, I would I would actually be really interested in a guy like Everson Griffin. Well, it's the other side of the ball as far as Stefanski is concerned. But there's a comfort level, even though just, just by being there and coming from Minnesota, uh, even though they, he wasn't a position coach, um, I, I think it's a comfort level thing. And, and I think it matters. You know, we talk about it a ton in the NBA. We don't talk about it as much in the NFL. But I think it matters to have guys that have been to the postseason and, and know what it's like and know what it takes to get there, know how, know how to act when you get there. I, I think that matters to an extent. You know, and, I'm, you know I'm, make that case with Clowney, too. But, but Griffin has, has been there as well. I'm looking at Griffin and, and Clowney and the numbers. Um, the, the, forced, the, the quarterback hits kind of surprised me that, that Clowney has 55, had 55 last year. And uh, Griffin had uh, had 62. Is there anything to read from that? I think uh, you know Clowney did miss some time early in the year. Actually, the one thing about Clowney, even though his sack numbers weren't high, he did uh, produce a, a fair amount of pressures. He did produce a fair amount of quarterback hits. But it is interesting to see Griffin kind of coming in with more quarterback hits than Clowney did. Is there any other names we should be looking at if, if that position, if the, if the Browns are still looking to, to cover that spot? I think really, I mean, look, there's always a guy here or there that you could add to fill out your roster. But, you know, again, they added Adrian Claiborne early in free agency. He's sort of a depth guy for them. 
they could look to maybe add another depth guy or two or let some of the young guys behind them compete. But I think those are really, the, you know, if you're looking for an addition, those those two big names are the guys to keep an eye on. I don't know that it'll happen, uh, but I think the Browns are going to be aggressive to try to make that position. You know, I don't better. think I don't think there's a secret that not too many people impressed with the linebacker core. What is anything going to be done about that, or just uh, play it out and just say that'll be our weakest link out there? It seems like this is what they're going to do. They're going to let Mac Wilson and Sione Takitaki have a shot at it. B.J. Goodson is a guy who can play on the inside that they sign. I think he's going to get a real shot. I think this is one of those actions speak louder than words things. I don't know how much they value that linebacker position and spending a lot of money at the linebacker position. I think they prefer to put that money in the secondary and put it in the pass rush. And linebacker is sort of, I don't want to say an afterthought, but it's just not as important as those other positions. Is, is this an Andrew Berry call? Is this a, a D. Podesta, Paul D. Podesta call? Is this a uh, Kevin Stefanski? Or is it, are they really on the same page as they claim to be? I, I mean, I think the front office is the one calling the shots on, on these sorts of moves. And uh, I should mention they drafted Jacob Phillips, too, who's, who's an interior linebacker, uh, which also tells you, I think they value interior guys more than kind of edge rush types right. of linebacker. That's right. really what they have. But I think this is, you know, D. Podesta, Barry, they're going to pay a lot of attention to positional value and, and how much they spend at each level of the defense. 216-575-0403 is the number to call if you want to talk to Dan Lobby at Cleveland.com and The Plain Dealer. Tomorrow night, it'll be Bud Shaw. Well, Wednesday night, uh, Dennis Maniloff, the D-man. Then Thursday, Mary Kay Campbell will join us. East, West, and South, that's where you're going to find the Three locations of uh, Northeast Factory Direct. You'll also find it at northeastfactorydirect.com. That's where you want to go first before you go to one of the extra, one of the other uh, locations, as we see right there. We'll come on back. We'll uh, have uh, we'll have a look at what Peter King had to say. Interesting. Most people jumping on the Browns bandwagon. He's not one of them. More sports and less living continues exclusively on Cleveland.com. Celebrate Nature Stone's 30-year anniversary with a free Nature Stone floor. During 2020, we will be giving away 30 free floors to 30 very lucky customers to say thank you for making Nature Stone the best concrete flooring solution for garages, basements, and more. Call or visit naturestone.com today to register to win, and we'll send you a copy of our new buyer's guide absolutely free. There's no purchase necessary. Winners will be chosen monthly. With over 30 million square feet installed for more than 60,000 customers, it's easy to see why I always say, it's not just a floor. Wow, it's Nature Stone. There are tastes we remember. Every smell brings the happiness of times gone by. Experience this every time you walk into Gallucci's Italian Foods. Whether you need lunch on the go, a catered party, or that perfect blend of wine, meats, and cheeses, Gallucci's has exactly what you're looking for. Straight from Mama's Kitchen, for old world traditions or original experiences. From the tastes you remember to new flavors you'll never forget. Gallucci's is a tasty branch of your family tree. When it comes to selling you a mattress, most retailers are handing you a line, a long line of extra steps that drive up costs and create confusion. At the Original Mattress Factory, we simplify the mattress shopping experience by building mattresses and box springs in our own local factories and selling them direct to you. It's short, sweet, and simply makes sense. So experience more than just a mattress store. Experience an original, the Original Mattress Factory. Time for a uh, how come cookie. How come uh, sometimes checks take a while to get to your house, but uh, bills have no, no problem. They're always there on time. Have you found that to be a true thing, uh, Dan? Yeah, it's it's a, it's strange how that works. Those bills <laughs> those bills show up right it's, when they're supposed the to. The postman knows. Okay, this is a bill. We better get it to him quickly. Two one six five seven five zero four zero three is the number to call. Dan Lobby is with us. Peter King is not joining the uh, minions who uh, are all over the Cleveland Browns this year. It's interesting. Last year, the Browns was a favorite choice by a lot of people and uh, had a disappointing year. And uh, some are saying, well, that's just a mulligan because of Freddie Kitchen. So we'll, we, we're going to expect the Browns to be very, very good here. But Peter King isn't one of them. Peter King has uh, 20, 32 uh, NFL teams listed. What do you think he has the Browns list? 24th out of those 32. There you see it. The Browns took Baker Mayfield first overall. And he's had a couple of good games on the backhand of 2018. 
but uh, a lot more shaky ones. Enter Kevin Stefanski with the third offense uh, Mayfield it, for Mayfield in 25 months as a pro. He's coming in to mold the best possible offense around Baker and uh, then takes a few throws out of his hands and a few more balls in the hands of a running game, and that steamrolled to a 4.8 yard per average uh, last year, and that's where we're going to be uh, of importance to anybody this year. Got to curve some egos. What, uh, what's best for Mayfield is going to be best for the offense long term. Jack Conklin and Jedrick uh, Wills will give them more protect protection and free agent tight end Austin Hooper is a solid intermediate option. The tools are there for a very good offense, but I have Cleveland down in the nether region because I need to see uh, Baker Mayfield be a more consistent player. Agree or disagree? That's Peter King of uh, Football Morning in America. I think he makes good points about Baker Mayfield. I think we've made a lot of assumptions about him that he's going to be better, and we've looked back at that those last eight games of 2018 as uh, one of the reasons why. But uh, you know, you remember in those games they didn't play great defenses. He threw three interceptions each against Houston and Baltimore. The good defenses he did he did face through a lot of interceptions last year. I, I think if your questions are about Baker Mayfield, I, I think that's fair. He's got to go out and prove it this year. We we've said that over and over. This is a prove it year for Baker Mayfield. So I, I don't think he's being unfair there. I, I know he doesn't have the Browns ranked real high. I, I probably move him up a, a little higher than he had them. Uh, but I do think it's fair to say, look, Baker, you've got to go there and prove that you belong as a starting quarterback. In right. Based on what you've seen of Baker Mayfield, what you know of him, talking to him, what do you think that uh, as far as um, that, so many different offensive coordinators and head coaches that he's had, do you think at this point he's, he's okay with that and that won't be an excuse that they can use? You know, one of the interesting things the last time we talked to him is when, when that was brought up, I, I thought he had an opportunity to maybe make that an excuse. And instead he said, you know, I'm just happy to learn offenses from all these different people. Uh, he was happy to kind of have all those voices uh, teach him. Now, maybe he was just saying that, right, because he's on the record. He's talking to a big group of reporters and, and he just didn't want to make an excuse. I don't think Baker is going to make excuses. He doesn't strike me as that type of guy. Uh, but that doesn't mean that it hasn't been a hindrance to him to have so many different coordinators and, and deal with these different systems in, in his young career. You know, I, I don't want to turn this into a discussion about uh, the flag and taking an E and all that. Just, But in Baker's case, um, did he do the right thing based on what he has to uh, accomplish with his teammates and himself? Or uh, do you think that was that was real, what he was saying about uh, for sure that he'd be on the uh, his teammates' side? I mean, based on what we know about Mayfield, it's safe to say that if he said it, it it's probably going to happen. I, you know, I think he needed to stand behind his teammates. And that's something that we've noticed across the league uh, throughout all of this, that these guys are, are really standing together more than anything. And so he's going to have his teammates backs. And if they decide that they're going to kneel during the anthem this season, it, he's going to join them. I would be surprised if he actually said that. And it didn't happen. That's just not the yeah. Baker Mayfield that we know right now. Yeah. How about how about the fact that is this uh, an undoable thing to to have the national anthem done while the players are still in the locker room? It, it's something they could consider, but I think at this point, it, it's I, I think it would not be a good thing for the NFL to do that. Yeah. I think people would look at it as the NFL trying to hide from from right. what's going to happen. Take a I stand. Think it would be really take a stand and go with it, right? Yeah, I, I think they're just at that point where they have to um, they have to play it while the players are out there and deal with whatever consequences come from that after. Okay, when we come back, we'll talk about Kareem Hunt and uh, what he has to say about the new offense, and he's excited about it, and that's good news for the Cleveland Browns, no question about that. You can explore your interests, find a program that puts you on a path to a bright future at Tri-C, which offers more than 1,000 courses and in, in over... 140 career and technical programs. Go to try-c.edu for more information. Dan Lobby and I return in a moment. More sports and less Levine exclusively on cleveland.com. As a kid growing up, my dream was to go to college, play baseball, and get a degree. Coming out of high school, I had two choices. I was accepted into a four-year university, but I decided to come to Tri-C after receiving a scholarship. I got my associate's degree at Tri-C. They transferred all my credits straight into Baldwin Wallace, so I started at Baldwin Wallace University as a junior. My name is Tyler Leonard, and I earned my first degree at Tri-C. 
Well, hello everyone. Let me tell you a little bit about Brown's Football Insider. For only $3.99 a month, you can get text sent right to your phone each day from me, Dan Lobby, Scott Pasco, and Ellis Williams. In addition to that, you'll receive a Football Insider newsletter every day with special things from us, uh, things that you won't see anywhere else on the site. Uh, you'll get breaking news, analysis, features, film breakdown, and things like that. Texting us directly gives you a great chance to cut through the clutter of Facebook, Twitter, other social media, and avoid the trolls. Also, it's the only way to get your questions on the Orange and Brown Talk podcast. So why should you sign up? Try a 14-day free trial. You can cancel at any time. All it takes is one text, but you won't want to cancel. We have hundreds of subscribers join us over the last year. They love it and have stayed with us. We're seeing the Football Insider community grow every week. And it's only $3.99 a month, which is less than 14 cents a day. What I like most about Football Insider is the opportunity to connect with you one-on-one -on -one and really communicate with you. So how can you become a Football Insider? You can click on cleveland.com slash browns, the blue banner at the top of the page. Or easier yet, text me at 216-208-3965. Again, that's 216-208-3965. Three nine six five. It takes attention to detail. With your local Bryant dealer, you're getting more than just a technician. You're getting someone who pays attention to your needs and the little things that make a big difference. It takes a dealer you can rely on. And to keep your family warm this winter, here, let me show you how this works. It takes Bryant. Bryant. Whatever it takes. To keep your family comfortable, it takes Smiley One Heating and Cooling. Find them at smileyone.com. Let's check out this date in sports history. How about this? Uh, 2014, San Antonio Spurs win their fifth NBA title, beating LeBron James and the Miami Heat in five games. 216-575-0403 is the number to call. Dan Lobby with us of uh, Cleveland.com and The Plain Dealer. We mentioned Kareem Hunt uh, previously. It looks like they got a, a role from him, for him, and the fact that he'll start from the beginning of the season rather than halfway through is, is a good sign. And, and Alex Van Pelt has said that you know, it's been a little tough to kind of find that role because they haven't been able to get out on the field. But uh, I think it's exciting what they can do with Kareem Hunt. Obviously, he can give Nick Chubb a break if they need to do that. But I've sort of gone into this year viewing Kareem Hunt as this team's third receiver because you have to make decisions yeah. when, when you put guys on the field. Do you want Rashard Higgins or Kareem Hunt on the field? Do you want I know that. Hodge? Or I know that answer. <laughs> Hunt's going to win a lot of those decisions. Yeah, well, uh, Kareem Hunt seems happy with what they're going with now. He says, we're going to run a lot of two-backs uh, offense. I see myself coming in and being a one-two, you know, Nick and I, just coming in and taking the game over every week. And uh, they see me as a running back, not as a gadget guy. And I respect that. I think they had to use him as a gadget guy last year, didn't they, Dan, because of the lateness of him being eligible to play? Yeah, it was halfway through the season, yeah. and he, yeah. he showed up. And, and I thought, look, he said all the right things. He embraced the role they wanted him to have, blocking and, and all of that. But I do think this offense is all about deception, making runs look like passes, passes look like, like runs. And the guy that really unlocks a lot of that is Kareem Hunt because you just never know – what he can do because he's such a good runner but he's also a pretty good receiver too that can line up in multiple spots all right when you when you say that about the different ways they're going to line up and different things that things they can do how much different is that from many of the teams in the nfl now is, is stefanski's is his offensive uh game plan that much different than anybody else's it's not groundbreaking there are other teams that do this san francisco is, is kind of the model with kyle shanahan and, and what he's done and what he did in atlanta as well uh, he, he's really been the model. If anything, it's going to look a little more old school. It's not going to be as spread out. It's going to be guys tighter to the line, more bigger bodies, you know, multiple backs, a full back. So that's really where it's unique is it's almost turning back the clock a little bit and, and going bigger instead of smaller and faster. All right, if, if games go the way the Browns would expect them to go, what, how many touches are you looking for in a game on an average game? Let's say uh, uh, beginning of the season. How many touches would Kareem Hunt get versus uh, Nick Chubb? 
I don't think it's a real high number necessarily because you want Nick Chubb to carry the ball 15 to 20 times at least. So, and then you've got Odell Beckham, Jarvis Landry. There's only one football, right? There's only so many offensive plays. But I think to get Kareem Hunt 10 to 12 touches, however you can do that, that's probably going to be your sweet spot. He, he's not going to be a, a featured back unless something happens to Nick Chubb. But if you can make those you know, 8, 10, 12 touches a game count, uh, then I think he, he can be a real asset for this team. You know, I'm thinking about it. What a defensive coordinator from some other team early in the season before they have a book on the Browns. There's so many different things the Browns can, can do that I'm not sure some of the early season opponents um, will know exactly who to concentrate on. Do you, do you see a, a defensive coordinator, a coordinator maybe scratching his head and say, what do I do here? How do we, who, who's the main man? Who would be the main man to stop? <laughs> I, I guess you would start with Chubb. I think most coordinators look at this type of offense and say you have to try and stop the run. So I guess you would start there. Uh, but that's part of what makes Kareem Hunt so special in this offense is at the very least, you can look at Nick Chubb and you kind of know how he's going to get the ball and what's going to happen. You, same with Odell, same with Jarvis Landry, even with the tight ends. But Kareem Hunt's just different. I mean, he could line up in the slot. He could line up wide. He could go in motion into the backfield. There's so many different ways he could get the ball. And I think that's one of those things where they're going to have to look for 27 and then they're going to have to try and decide what he's doing. And then while you're doing that, the ball goes to Nick Chubb or Odell Beckham or Jarvis Landry. That's really where the complications come Yeah, in. you just wonder, though, do you, are you going to have to score 35 points a game because of the defense? I mean, I think the Browns, if they put their mind to it, probably could score a lot of points, but are they going to have to? Yeah, they should be able to score a lot of points, but this defense has to prove a lot. You, you hope this pass rush is better, which can change a lot of things. And you hope your two cornerbacks on the outside are solid, but the key word that I said there twice is hope. Uh, you, this defense still has to go out there and prove it. And you don't want to be in a position where you have to score 30, 35 a game right. to win. Right. And hopefully this defense will at least be good enough where you can. You don't have to be perfect offensively. We haven't talked much about it here because we haven't seen them play yet. But um, the special teams, do you expect anything? Do you expect some points out of a, a special teams? What do, you, what do you expect from those, these guys? I hope so. It's been really bad lately. They just haven't had much of a return game. I think Donovan Peoples-Jones will help there. I think that's where he's going to contribute. He's a sixth-round pick. I think it's a little unfair to expect him to come in and be a huge factor on offense, but I think he's a guy that can help there. And JoJo Natson is sort of the forgotten free agent signing, but a University of, Ak a University of Akron product, a guy who's had success returning the football with the Rams. You have two guys there that I think can come in and help your return game. So hopefully they get that going because their field position advantages just haven't been there. Yeah, uh, really, I, probably since... I don't, I don't remember when the last time was that the, some team had to worry about the Browns special team. And, and by, yeah, and by and the way, speaking of special teams, you th are they going to bring in uh, some, some uh, kickers to have some competition, or are they pretty well set with what they're going to do? I would imagine they would add some kickers, but I'm not sure how real the competition would be. Uh, but you always like to have that extra leg in camp, uh, an extra punter, an extra kicker. Uh, it seems like, you know, Austin Seibert is still a guy that they like, and Mike Prefer sounded, the, at least the last time we heard about him, like, you know, he's an Austin Seibert fan. But, you know, Seibert missed some kicks last year. And Jamie Gillen, hey, he's got to be a little better, too. He's got Pro Bowl potential, but it, it's a big step to get there. I, I think they'll add somebody, but I don't know how real the competition well, will be. Yeah, it's just be you need you need legs in in training camp just to ease the load off the whoever's going to be the regular kicker. Same thing with quarterback. Yeah, you always need a fourth or fifth quarterback in there. Yeah, you don't want these guys kicking in the fourth quarter and and all of that. You want it to be a nice normal camp for them. Two one six five seven five zero four zero three is the number to call. You can email us during the show at reallesslevine at uh, gmail dot com. Northeast Factory Direct, East, West, and South. Three locations plus the website is where you're going to, going to want to go first. It is northeastfactorydirect.com. Sokolowski's University Inn, the only winner in the history of Cleveland restaurants to win the James Beard Foundation Award. And uh, they're getting ready to announce what, uh, what they're going to do with the, with the restaurant and timing and all that. And you'll check out the website and uh, you'll be the first to know. We're going to take a break. More sports and less living continues exclusively on cleveland.com.
Your home is your most important investment, and your basement is the go-to part of your home. It's your children's rec room. It's where your family and friends spend time together. It's much more than just a basement. Now is the perfect time to add beauty and value to your home with an authentic Nature Stone basement floor. And every Nature Stone floor comes with Russell's Promise, our true unconditional warranty. For a limited time, get our exclusive mini pearl stone for as low as $2.99 a square foot, plus installation. Schedule your free cost estimate easily online today at naturestone.com. It's not just a floor. Wow, it's Nature Stone. When it comes to selling you a mattress, most retailers are handing you a line, a long line of extra steps that drive up costs and create confusion. At the Original Mattress Factory, we simplify the mattress shopping experience by building mattresses and box springs in our own local factories and selling them direct to you. It's short, sweet, and simply makes sense. So experience more than just a mattress store. Experience an original, the Original Mattress Factory. Presque Downs and Casino has sports betting. Use one of our 50 state-of-the-art Bet America kiosks to place your bet and watch your favorite games on one of our many HD televisions or visit our sportsbook area. Only at Presque Isle Downs and Casino. Let's take a look at uh, this date in Les Levine sports history, uh, June 15, 1965. Les just decides to forego the MLB draft. You blame me, uh, Dan? It's, it's a bold decision. I think it worked out, though. <laughs> it's not like they were pressing me to, to make a decision at that point. 216-575-0403 is the number to call, which is the one that was called by BP and Pepper Pike. Hello, BP. Hey, Les and Dan. How are you guys doing tonight? We're doing well. Oh, good, good. It's been a while since I talked with you guys. Um, I thought I'd first start off with the uh, Kyrie Irving you know, I'm a big fan of the NBA, even though the Cavs are long out of it. But, you know, I want to know what you thought about the Kyrie Irving. You know, it seems to me a bit odd where, you know, he's not going to be playing in these playoffs, allegedly, you know, down in Orlando. And they won't even let him attend the games as a fan. And, you know, because of the quarantine, quarantine situation. But yet right. now he wants to, like, advise all the other players. Like, hey, guys, I think you guys should sit this out. You know, it's just, you know. Well, don't, the, don't forget, he, it's my understanding, he's getting paid for the, the full contract, right? I mean, I Based don't on know. the fact he was injured before all this, uh, the, the. Uh, oh, yeah, 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 because he's, well, I mean, if he elects, that, I, I don't know the ins and outs of his contract, but, I mean, he's got a guaranteed contract. This isn't right. the NFL where, you know, some of it's not guaranteed. So exactly. I'm, sure, I'm not worried about Kyrie Irving and money. He's made. I'd be worried about his. I'd be worried about. Dollars. I'd be worried about his teammates who chose them to be their representative. But that's another story for another day. Well, it turns out Kyrie Irving is one of the six, like vice presidents of the Players Association of the NBA. So I'd like to know what the other 400 guys were thinking when they, you know, made him, you know, a vice president. Chris Paul is the president of the Players Association. Obviously, he's really good friends with LeBron. So again, this is like LeBron against yeah, Kyrie Irving. That never ends. Uh, I also believe that Kyrie Irving has decided that the NBA basketball is not round. He went to Duke, but I don't think he went to too many classes down there. <laughs> he went to 11 right. games. He played 11 games. That's about how many classes he took. I, I don't yeah. know. I'm, 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 you, because you're a big Cavs fan, are you upset that they didn't get picked or they didn't uh, put no. everybody in here? I I know, you know, you hear the rhetoric on the radio, and even the players, the Cavs players, like, oh, we're really mad, we're disappointed. I mean, guys, you were the worst team in the NBA, basically, because Golden State was bad because of, you know, catastrophic injuries. Unfortunately, the, I'm glad the Cavs are not going, and I hope they get at least a second pick in the draft, hopefully the first pick. If we slide down to the sixth pick in the draft, I'm going to be really upset. In, in an ideal world, who do you want out of that draft? Well, you know what a wise man told me? Wiseman. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> seven foot one, right? Yeah, yeah, you got it. James Wiseman, he's seven foot tall. He's sort of like a, like a young Sean Kemp, not the Sean Kemp that we got. 
but a young, athletic. You know, we need some defense. You know, that's the Cavs have guys that can score the ball. They've got about five point guards, but they need somebody to sort of patrol the paint. You know, and, and Tristan Thompson's a good player, but I think I, I think he'll be joining his buddy LeBron out in L.A. Okay. Any other things you want to bring up since you haven't called us in a while? And why you haven't called us is beyond me. We we accept your phone calls. <laughs> well, I called Collect. They they, ref, they refused the, the that's call. That's something. Anybody under 40 is saying, what the heck is calling collect? What is that? Yeah, Dan's probably saying, what the hell is that? Yeah, Dan's saying, I, I use my, my pay phone. <laughs> you know, that's the only thing that's cheaper today than in past years is long-distance calls. No, you're right, you're right. In the old days, if you called Florida, you, you were like, you know, keep it short, keep it short. That's long distance. Uh, when you were in college, did you have some fake way of calling collect so your parents knew you were back uh, back in school? I would just call them. Uh, I lived in a fraternity house, and I would call collect. Back then, you, there was one phone for about 30 guys. Right. It was in the basement of the frat house. So your parents never knew where you were. And <laughs> but they knew you were home. You were safe. Yeah. All right, BP. Like yeah, you, uh, I think, I mean, I'm, I'm actually thinking, since Dan's on your show, the NFL might be the first team to actually, you know, strap them on and play a real game. I mean, like, this NBA might be talking itself out of their league. Yeah. I want to know what Dan thinks of that. Yeah, Dan, what do you think of that? I, I still I still believe that, that the NBA will figure this out. I, I forget which, who it was, but there was a player that tweeted, look, if LeBron James wants to play in the bubble in Orlando, the NBA is going to play in the bubble in Orlando. Yeah. I, I think a lot of the powerful players want to play. Uh, I think the NBA can figure it out. But still, the NFL, that calendar, it's it remains in their favor. They don't have to play a real game until September. Yeah, good so. point. Uh, they got at least the one beginning thing, of the one season. One thing I did want to ask is I do have some Browns tickets for some games coming up. So, I mean, what is the talk about, you know, are they just going to, instead of seating 72,000 people, are they just going to let in, you know, 15,000? Like, what? Are there any, I don't there think, any talk? I don't think they have any real plan in, in effect right now. That sounds about yeah. the right number, 15 or 20, if, if you're talking about uh, social distancing. Uh, and how are they even going to social distance? Let's say, you know, let's say I own four tickets for the game against the Ravens. Yeah. You know, how are they going to social distance that when another guy might have six yeah. tickets? Or... Way out of my pay grade. Can't, I can't answer that. We'll get the answers yeah. for you. Thanks, BP. Good to talk to you, as always. All right, time for our uh, Facebook question of the day. We said baseball owners and players have been un unable to reach an agreement on the 2020 season. The players have called on Rob Manfred to set a schedule. So is a 20 is a 50 uh, game schedule too short for a baseball season? Actually, just before we went on the air, uh, Manfred says I'm I'm not guaranteeing that uh, there's going to be a season. Joe English says 50 games is a joke. Having everybody make the playoffs is a joke. Part of winning the World Series is that it's very hard to do. If we played 50 games every year, the Indians might have 10 championships. It's a, a disgrace and shameful for true baseball fans. Larry Pantages says here's an idea: have 50 games on the field. Another 112 more games using dice and stratomatic play playing cards. We guarantee to be done by October 1st. Trevor Bauer can be commissioner and his drone can fly over the game just to make sure nobody cheats. Kevin Pyle says, yes, I never thought I'd say this, but cancel the whole season. MLB, both the players and owners have already soured the fans tremendously. Let the greedy players go a year without a paycheck and the owners without any uh, revenue. And unless the, uh, they do something with the minors next year, both sides, We'll get their act together and uh, work on a new CBA. I don't know about that. Dennis Davis says, yep, they blew it. Could have owned the summer and reminded everybody why baseball is the best of all major league games. Too bad. This will take at least five years to recover from. Glenn Berger, 50 games, way too short. It's only 31% of the normal season. Last year, the Indians were only 26 and 24 after 50 games. Playing only 50 games would be a joke of a season. Jordan Reese says, yes, and I think the players were being way too greedy. Daniel Chick, I think the better off it's better off canceling the season. Gerard Morelli, of course not. Why not just have 50 game seasons from now on? Then even the players said, go ahead and schedule games. They haven't uh, agreed on the salary issues or the pandemic protocols yet. As ESPN said, it's still a mess. Andy Mees says, I'll take it if the Indians are going to go to the uh, win the World Series in 2020. Tim Gebhardt, why hasn't Manfred been involved before this? And Robert Miller says, time to call it off. 50 games is way too few. Dan, what do you think? 50 games enough to be relevant? <laughs> Anything baseball can do to get on the field. It, Even 50 it, games? Enough to be 
Yeah. I don't think 50 games is ideal, obviously, for a lot of the points that the, everyone in those comments made and that baseball has always been a marathon, not a sprint, and, and you take that away. Yeah, perfect uh, example is the Washington Nationals. I think we're 12 games under 500 at, at this mark in the season, and they went and won yeah, the whole here. thing. So. And, and the Indians under Terry Francona have been always a late starter. starters, yeah. really fast finishers. You're absolutely but, right. All right, we're going to come back. I, I one just, more. Go ahead. I just don't think baseball can be picky right now. I, I think they need to try and get back on the field. Well, they've both sides have turned everybody off. There's nobody to blame as far as fans are concerned. Fans are just ticked off. We're going to come back one more time with uh, Dan Lobby, find out what he's thinking here in the last uh, segment of the show. More sports and less of Vane exclusively on Cleveland.com. home is your most important investment and your garage is the entrance to your home it's where your kids come in from school it's where your family and friends gather together it's much more than just a garage now is the perfect time to add beauty and value to your home with an authentic nature stone garage floor and every nature stone floor comes with russell's promise our true unconditional warranty for a limited time get our exclusive gray brown blend stone for as low as two dollars and 99 cents a square foot plus installation schedule your free cost estimate easily online today at naturestone.com it's not just a floor wow it's nature stone there are tastes we remember. Every smell brings the happiness of times gone by. Experience this every time you walk into Gallucci's Italian Foods. Whether you need lunch on the go, a catered party, or that perfect blend of wine, meats, and cheeses, Gallucci's has exactly what you're looking for. Straight from Mama's Kitchen. For old world traditions or original experiences. From the tastes you remember to new flavors you'll never forget. Gallucci's is a tasty branch of your family tree. The Ohio Lottery Partners in Education program recognizes role model students and teachers from across Ohio. Nominations can now be done completely online. To nominate a deserving teacher or student, go to ohiolottery.com. In the About section, find Partners in Education. There you will find links to the nomination forms. Students, kindergarten through 12th grade, can be academic all-stars. Teachers can be honored as a Teacher of the Month. The Ohio Lottery Partners in Education, where stars shine. All right, here's the lineup for this week. Tomorrow night, Bud Shaw will be here. Wednesday night, Dennis Maniloff. And Thursday, Mary Kay Cabot will join us. 216-575-0403 uh, if you want to get in for the last segment of the show. Time for some how-come quickies. Uh, Mr. Gullible, you're, you're getting better at trying not to tick me off, but you tick me off a little bit on one of your two, which I'll get to in a moment. This is uh, Help me grade these, uh, Dan. Dan Lobby with us, okay. uh, Cleveland Plain Dealer and Cleveland.com. Big Ed says, how come when the neighbors knocked on my uncle's door and told him his dogs were chasing people on bikes, he said, that's ridiculous. My dogs don't even own bikes. Well, yeah, I, I saw where that one was going, but I'll still give it a, a, a solid B. A solid B. Um, you know, that's uh, Groucho Marx who chased an elephant in his pajamas last night. What the elephant was doing in his pajamas, I, I have no idea. Uh, all right, Mr. Gullible, we're skipping the first one, and you know it. We're just, we can't go down that road. <laughs> How come an obese psychic is a fortune teller? A fortune teller. A fortune teller. <laughs> okay. Your grade. What I'm do you sorry. got? You know what? I'm going to go less than the other one. That's a, a B minus. B minus. All right. It's a, yeah, B minus. That's, that's, that's doable. That's doable. All right. What is uh, Dan Lobby, who covers the Browns for uh, Cleveland.com, um, what do you do the next couple of weeks until everything is back open and back uh, real players to talk to? What, what goes on between now and then for you? Well, well this is really sort of the, the dead period in the NFL. Once this offseason program wraps up, the, the 26th is the last day they can do anything virtually, and I doubt it'll even go that long. I know that uh, the Cardinals have basically told their veterans they're done. We'll see in training camp. This is that part of the year when, uh, in normal years, a lot of NFL executives would go on their vacations in July, and, and coaches as well, and, and players lock up the door, kind of right? go. Their step. What's that? Just lock up the doors and say, "Get out of here, come back in a month." Pretty much, and uh, you know, we'll see what happens this year if, if training camps start on time. But this is also a scary time too, uh, because this is when players can get in trouble. So, uh, you, you know, executives are trying to enjoy their their time off, but they also are, are keeping an eye on. Uh, the headlines as well, hoping nobody they know shows up in there. Yeah, like drivers, 
Um, yeah, that, this, this is unfortunately, historically, things happen. You think you're getting time off, but you're really not. Yeah, it's a, it can be a very nervous time, especially that uh, that Fourth of July weekend is, is kind of a, the first nervous weekend for these guys. And then you get through that, and, and you feel like you're safe until training. You know, I know with Kevin Stefanski and other rookie coaches, they're they're doing the best they can do. It's obviously obviously a tough time for for everybody, but the, and the, there's no way of measuring this till you see results of games. But just from what you're seeing, and it just seems that the, with the uh, Zoom uh, interviews you guys have. It seems like there's an awful lot of them. Is, is it more than usual, or more more interaction between you and the coaching staff than on a normal week or normal uh, pre pre uh, uh, period where when when of course the teams will come show up in Berea. We would normally get the coach a little more often, but we have gotten the offensive coordinator and defensive coordinator. Uh, so some of that has has been an added bonus. You usually get a little more access to players just because you're there, so you can you know, grab somebody and, and request a player and do an interview with them. But I think the Browns have done a good job of, of making people available to us because this is a very unprecedented time and they're trying to navigate a lot of this technology uh, and, and get their players lined up. It's harder to do when they're all over the country. So I think they've done a good job. And as far as, you know, getting to assistants and coordinators, I think that's been beneficial to us. We've actually gotten them a little earlier in the process. Yeah, does, is that an, an NFL decision to get, get their people out there quicker? Or is it a Browns decision? Is it a, is it a, uh, uh, a, a general manager decision? Is it a head coaching decision? I mean, Andrew Barry or Stefanski, what, or do you think it's just an agreement? That's the way they, they've had it when they've been at other, with other organizations, and that's the way they want to continue it. They're sort of trying to, to skirt that line that they would normally have certain requirements where we would be at the facility for three OTA practices and right. for all three mini time practices. And they're trying to skirt that line of required availability uh, sort of in this world where it's hard to kind of get these guys in front of us. Yeah, so, and they get in front of you. I was going to ask if, if you've seen a difference in the attitude of the, the front office out there, but it's too, so you have nothing to compare it to. You have new coaches anyway, brand new coaching staff. so. So there, there's, it's not based on any history. Right, and we haven't been able to see how guys interact. We normally in the spring would see about six or seven practices. So right. we haven't been able right. to see guys interact. We haven't been able to see how the front office guys walk around during practice, how coaches right. coach players, you know, who's hard on players, who's not, you know, what players are gravitating to each other. We're sort of missing out on a lot of that stuff. Will Jimmy Haslam have a whistle to blow any time in the practice? I, I don't know if Jimmy would have a whistle. It would never surprise me, though, if, uh, if J.W. Johnson walked out there with a whistle sometime. He's starting to show himself a little bit, isn't he? He is. He's, he's become a lot more vocal. And, uh, you know, it kind of started when they announced the draft was coming to Cleveland. He was sort of the face of that right. for the Browns. Right. He started to become a little more front-facing for the team. Was he the face and decision-maker on the uniforms, too? I don't know if he was the decision maker, but again, that was another situation where he was the one making the rounds, doing interviews and, and all of that. I, I think I think everybody learned a hard lesson about the uniforms and, and they certainly got those right. So there, there was probably no shortage of people who wanted to be the face of that. They got it right, in your opinion? Is that what you said? Because I think they got it I right. Do. I do. I, I think they got it right going back to the, the more classic look, I, especially I after how drastically they changed it. All right, Dan, enjoy your time off. We'll get to you as soon as we can. and uh, we'll. Talk real Browns when we uh, get together next time. All right. Thanks a lot, Les. Thank you, Dan Lobby, Cleveland Plain Dealer, and, of course, the Cleveland.com. All right, that'll do it for us. We'll be back here tomorrow with uh, Bud Shaw, Dennis Maniloff on Wednesday, Mary Kay Cabot on Thursday. Of all the shows I've ever done, this is the most recent.